So I still have a problem with this whole electric vehicle thing. I mean, I really do believe it is the future of transportation. It's better for the environment. I get it. But the fact that the valuations on these electric car, the electric vehicle vehicles are so high. I mean, it's like 20 some odd years ago when I got into this business of managing money for individuals, it was the dot-com thing. I mean, I remember WebMD and Pets.com was going to change how I was going to feed my dog. Where are they now? I mean, the whole hype and excitement over electric vehicles seems like a, a manipulated play to get people sucked in so the big institutions just can take advantage of of, of the average investor. I don't doubt that down the road, 5, 10, 15 years, when the numbers really come together, and especially the infrastructure side of this really starts happening, that electric vehicles will be the dominant, you know, sold item, you know, car item or vehicle item in the market. But the problem is, is when you see these companies jump to these astronomical prices, and yet electric vehicles represent 2% of all cars or vehicles sold in the world? I'm like, it doesn't make sense. You know, you look at a company like NEO, who has a market capitalized valuation of $63 billion. Okay, $63 billion valuation. Yet, I believe they only sell in Asia at this point. China is their biggest market. And China has a, you know, a big goal uh, by 2025 that 20% of all vehicle sales are electric vehicles. Well, that's fantastic. But in this country, we're trying to ban TikTok. And that's a Chinese company. So how does a company like NEO get in the United States when we're trying to ban one of the most popular social media platforms on the planet because it's Chinese and they're mining our data? What doesn't make you think that NEO would mine our data uh, in driving our cars and be able to take them over through AI or something? I mean, I know that's ludicrous and it's crazy, but it's not any it's not out of you know context to what is really going on in our world. General Motors, one of the most dominant car sales companies. I mean trucks and cars and yeah, they're way behind the whole electric car uh, vehicle situation, but they have a market capitalization of 60 billion. And this is a company who sells a lot of cars. My question is, are we overhyping these stocks? Is this just become too big of a situation in that, you know, it just reminds me of the dot-com situation. It reminds me of my buddy who during the housing uh, boom was printing money, flipping and buying homes and developing neighborhoods. At one point he was worth five uh, or eight figures, mid eight figures, and then it all stopped. And now he's not worth anywhere near that. And I just, I just look at the valuations, I look at where the hype on electric vehicles, and I wonder, are we in another bubble? Tesla this week got uh, brought in, will be brought into the S&P 500. And what that means is they will be one of the top 10 holdings in the S&P 500 come December 21st. Now, that's going to be great for their stock because you got to understand when a new company comes into an index like the S&P 500, it means that every other index out there that mirrors the S&P 500 like, you know, the, the whatever, Vanguard S&P 500, or if that is a, such a thing, or the, you know, uh, SPY, 
they all have to go out and take a position in that company that's being introduced into the S&P 500. So Tesla uh, will be one of those companies. It will be a top 10 company based on its market capitalization weighting, which is the stock price times the number of outstanding shares available to the public. That gives your market cap weighting. Apple being one of the biggest, I think right over tr a trillion dollars or so. Um, uh, Tesla is not at that level yet, but it's quickly getting there and being introduced into the S&P 500 will help them grow their price. And I don't doubt that you'll see S uh, Tesla's price go up drastically because of all the money that will go into the S&P 500 that is then allocated into a Tesla situation. It'll drive the price up over time. But it, I still go back to, is it really worth it at this point? I mean, when I, so yesterday, I drove to Birmingham for a meeting with a client and I drove back, total of nine hours in the car. I didn't see one electric vehicle. And when I stopped for gas twice, I didn't see a charging station. I mean, I am still hesitant about buying an electric vehicle, even though I know it would be great for the environment and it would probably be much better for my pocketbook. But what happens when I'm driving through rural Alabama and I come get low on a charge on my vehicle, where do I charge it? Well, yeah, I guess I could plug it into a plug, but that's going to take hours. Whereas I in and out of a gas station in less than 10 minutes. So infrastructure is a big issue with electric vehicles. And I look at this and I go, until we have a massive infrastructure build out in electric vehicle and supporting electric vehicles, the, this is going to top out. Is, this could be another just dot-com uh, explosion, another housing uh, deal. I mean, until you convert people from their F-150s or F-250 pickup trucks to electric vehicles, that's, I mean, that's Ford's business right there. I mean, they sell more F-150s than anybody or pickup trucks in general i heard during the the during when they got all shut down that they produced one truck every 75 seconds i mean heck i didn't know there was that much demand but you got to convert all those diesel burning gas burning trucks to electric which means you got to have infrastructure and this is where i just hit this wall about electric vehicles. I mean, it's just, is it just being hyped by the institutions? Is it being hyped by the media? Is it just the flavor of the month? And I gotta believe it's a little bit of that flavor of the month. The prices that I'm looking at, Neo and these other ones, it's just hype. And I look at them and go, yeah, I wanna own them. Because in my last video, I talked about buying a electric vehicle in five years when the average price comes from $50,500 or $55,500 down to the average car uh, combustion engine price of $36,000, $36,000. $36, when that happens, then it becomes affordable. And hopefully by that time, the infrastructure will be built out. But right now, the prices of these companies, I just don't see it. I just don't see how it's justifiable other than it's leverage and momentum. And honestly, that is what drives this market for the last 10 years. It's not fundamentals. We're not growing. We're just growing our debt and our expansion of debt. And as long as we expand our debt, we will continue to see prices go. We'll see expansion in the market, in the economy. But until that happens, expansion of debt. And if next video you're going to see, I'm going to talk about the contraction of debt and why we're not growing and where you can look to find these indicators. I don't see electric vehicles 
being the dominant player in five years. Heck, I, I mean, China says they want 20% of all car sales or vehicle sales in China by 2025 be electric vehicles. In the United States, I just don't see that come happening. So how do you buy these companies at their prices unless you're trading them, unless you're trading them? I just have a problem buying at the top and having to hold it for five years just to get where I want to go. Instead, I risk manage, I buy within the range and buy at better times. And right now, I think you can wait, sit on your money, look for other opportunities, but just wait is my thought.